Hey guys, Tyler here. Um, down here in my workshop, I'm doing a little bit of work on a laptop here. Um, another MacBook Pro, it's 15 inches time. And I thought that maybe I'd do a follow-up video to that video I did way back when with my 17 inch where I you know, showed you guys how to stop them things from overheating. I uh, thought maybe you guys could use some help maybe with a 15 inch. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, you guys should be able to see everything there. So I've already taken the screws out around the edge. You see on this particular laptop, they're missing the feet. So I'm gonna show you guys how to fix the feet and put some, I got some spare used feet that I'm gonna glue down on there to the gentleman that sent me this to work on. So let's go ahead and work on getting everything disconnected. I think it's just a 15 inch, maybe a 2010, 2011. First thing I'm gonna do though is disconnect the battery. This connector just lifts straight up. And then I like to take it and kind of tuck it down in here just to make sure it doesn't reconnect itself or touch those pins again. So we now have no power on this board. Next step is removal of the ram. You got little fingers on each side, pull them slightly outward, the ram will slide upward. 45 degree angle, slide it right out, and set it off to the side. Second ram chip comes out the same way, make sure you pull this all the way out, lift this up. It should come up above the back of this as you can see, I can kind of get my finger around. And then pull out 45 degree angle, set it off to the side. Starting from here, we've got a connection here we have to take off, connection here, connection here, the fans, that's those two, the LCD over here, and the, looks like the plug into the, the plug into the wireless card as well. So we'll start off here, this is the cable coming from the hard drive, lift straight up. Next one is the speaker setup over here it looks like. Lift straight up. This is where the SATA, it doesn't have anything in there. This is where the, the optical drive would go. Straight up. Lift straight up again. The wire coming from the antenna array, that is going to slide back that way. Very gently. Fan, lift straight up. And if it kind of gets stuck, then you can get a little flathead in there. All right. This is the second fan here. I'll show you guys how, how I'm doing that. Just slide up underneath. And then I'm putting my finger completely on top just to hold it steady as I lift. Lift straight up. Nothing to it. Another cable right here. Lift straight up. So I'm moving the LCD cable. You want to lift this flap. See what the black kind of plastic stuff over it. Lift that up, and then you're going to pull the whole thing straight back, just like that. All right, at this point, we can actually start unbolting the board to lift it out. At this point, we're going to go around, we're going to remove these T5 screws. Got to make sure that we take the two screws out of here so we can undo these two connectors, connectors as well. And those are just Phillips heads. Lift our little bracket off. And this the first connector just pops straight off. Second one you have to unlock and then it slides out. At this point you're ready to go ahead and just lift, shimmy, Still connected to something. There we go. And then we've got one last connector. One last connector back here. That just pulls straight back up and out. We now have the complete logic board here. So what we're going to do now is we'll take Phillips head screwdriver. We'll start loosening the heat sinks to clean them down to get ready to repaste. As you can see, I'm just loosening them a little bit, going around a little bit at a time, loosening them because I don't want to warp or damage anything. Once you have all the screws out, just lift. Get a screw out the way, and you can see all the excess material we're going we're gonna to clean all down. Alright, at this point we're ready to start cleaning everything up. So cleaning all this is very simple. Isopropyl rubbing alcohol. 
on a paper towel. You should find that if your thermal paste is all dried and all, you should get it, be able to take it out kind of in chunks. It's very important that you get the top of the die. And just to make sure we're clear, when we're talking about the die, we're talking about the shiny part that you see up top here. This is where all the heat transfer happens. You don't want to knock any of these resistors or anything off. You see I'm just slowly picking the little bits of crap out of it. Usually I'd use an old toothbrush or something here, but I don't have any old toothbrushes on. Then I'm going to use a dry piece of the paper towel just to clean the, down the top one more time. And now, now the dyes are ready for some new and improved thermal transfer material. So the next thing we need to do now is get the uh, tops of the heat sinks clean. And this is where, as you can see, I mean, whole chunks of crap's coming out. We want to clean as much of that out of there as we can. We're going to use some Arctic Silver MX4 here. It was requested by the customer. I'm going to take this and put just... Well, that's actually like way too much right there. I'll have to clean that. As you see, I got a little bit too much over here. So I'm just going to scoop up a little bit of this excess with my tiny flathead screwdriver. And you see, the MX4 is extremely liquid, so it's going to spread very, very nicely. Just remove a little bit of that excess, and now we're ready to go ahead and put this right down. Of course this is a good time to make sure that your fans and all are clean. Alright, so I'm going to set this on there and I'm moving this around just a little bit just to try to make sure I get it. Complete coverage in there. And we'll start reinstalling our screws. Make sure you do not forget your springs. Also, do not tighten each of these springs all the way down. You just want to snug them slightly. Just get them started. And then you're going to go around and tighten them down evenly. You just want to go around and tighten them a little bit at a time. Until they're all torqued down. Now we're ready to reinstall this logic board. Before I go reinstall this, I'm just going to clean off the area. Alright, now I'll start reinstalling. I'm going to start back here with the power hookup. Get everything lined up appropriately. Now in this case, the speaker actually came out, so I had a hook on. As you saw there, I plugged the speaker back up, put it back into its little hole right here. Got to wiggle everything into place. And make sure that you don't leave any of your hookups left out. Also make sure your ports are all aligned correctly. Now if this last plug right here wants to fight you, work smarter, not harder. See how I took the fan out so that I could get this one back up here up top. Oh, and all these went back down there, so. Make sure we've got all of our cables back up where they belong. Let's go ahead and start off with that one. And go ahead and reinstall our fan here. Get all of our screws back in place. Nice thing too, if you just want to clean the fans out, of course this is as good an opportunity as any to go ahead and Make sure that your fans are nice and clean. Everything's easy to get to here. You don't even have to take the logic board out on this model to get your fans themselves cleaned out. Obviously, we want to make sure our fans are plugged back in. They just push straight down, nothing to it. You just line them up straight on top, push straight down. 
easy as can be. Go through, go ahead and get the rest of our everything hooked up. I have a tendency to actually go ahead and plug things back up as I go. Oh, and I left this cable underneath. Just seems easier that way to me. Now, of course, I'm not going to hook the battery up yet. Battery is always the very last thing to be plugged in. Now, this little ribbon cable here, when you go to reinstall it, you want to make sure that you've got it all the way in before you clip the catch back down. Next up, we want to go ahead and get our EGA hookup, our video hookup in place. All right. All right, so the next step is going to be a, to install our RAM. It goes in the opposite of how it came out. 45 degrees down. Push it all the way down. You'll hear it clip into place. All right. At this point, we're now ready to go ahead and hook up our battery. And we can bolt the lid back into place. All right, now that we've done all that, what we want to hear, all right. Now this does have an SSD in it, so it should boot fairly quick. So we went ahead and cleaned the screen and all down. And we need to go ahead and set the clock since we did disconnect everything on the motherboard. All right, so here's the current temperature of the CPU diode. We're sitting at 144 Fahrenheit. What we're gonna do is pipe a few yes terminals. This should load up the CPU nicely. Let's see how she does. Remember we want, we're hoping to see this stay under, stabilized at under 195. Fans are slowly coming up. Fans are up and you can see that the temperature is quickly falling back down. We're sitting at 185, 183, 181. 180, 178, so we're definitely under that 190 mark, 176, 178, it looks like that's about, <laughs> actually the fan is starting to come back down from top speed, how about that? kill these processes. Alright, so let's see how long it takes the system to stabilize back down to a lower temp. You see the temperature's quickly falling. Which CPU is this? Oh, this is a 2.2 Core i7. This is one of the Arendelle, Arendale Core i7s. These are one of the, these are a very hot running processor. Sitting around 153. So 153 to 180, it looks like it's gonna maintain a fairly even range. Well, there you go. I hope that was helpful for you. I'm gonna go ahead and get this boxed up and sent back over to the owner. Um, yeah, there you go. Hopefully this uh, turns out a little better than maybe my first video did. I know it was a little bit on the long side. I was trying to get every little detail in there, but you know, hey, you know, live and learn. So, 
yeah, there you go. I hope this video was enjoyable for you. If it helped out, please think about subscribing. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought, what you'd like to see different, what you'd like to see changed. Hey, I'm always open to feedback, so thanks. Have a good one.